back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Esther Viller, a medical doctor, psychologist, and writer known for arguing against conventional feminism. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, women earn less than men in virtually all occupations. In fact, the Bureau of Labor Statistics revealed that women earn 82 cents for every dollar a man earns. What's worse, the pandemic has set the women labor force participation back more than 30 years, about 56%, the same level it was in 1987. Most people will interpret these numbers as proof of the patriarchy, a society that is dominated by males. But our guest in this episode argues otherwise. In fact, Esther Villar boldly states that Western societies are unofficial matriarchs, where men are coldly exploited by women. In response to the earlier numbers, Villa would remark that these are truncated statistics and in turn offers the following facts. Men are sent into the battlefield. Women are not. Men are pensioned later in life than women, even though their shorter life expectancy should entitle them to being pensioned earlier. Men receive longer prison sentences than women for the same crimes. Men have no say in their own reproduction while women have the pill or abortion. Men financially support women. Women never or only temporarily financially support men. Men work all their lives, while women hold jobs temporarily or not at all. This list can go on indefinitely, according to Villar. Esther is not only vocal about the exploitation of men, she reveals powerful relationship dynamics men are often a victim of as always, let's start with a brief background. Esther Villar was born on September 16, 1935, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She is of German-Jewish descent and studied medicine at the University of Buenos Aires. In 1960, she went to West Germany on a scholarship to study psychology and sociology. She then worked as a doctor in a Bavarian hospital for a year and performed numerous other jobs. Esther Villa wrote several books throughout her career, including one play. She is best known for her 1971 book, The Manipulated Man, a work that has become a Bible in the MGTOW community. For those of you who don't know, MGTOW is like a male version of feminism. It stands for men going their own way. It is a fascinating community, and let me know in a comment section if you would like me to do an episode on one of its leaders. Anyway, this episode will cover what I believe to be Villar's much lesser known, but best work, The Polygamous Sex. The book began with the following axioms. Human life is driven by three major biological instincts. 1. Self-preservation. 2. Reproduction or sex drive. 3. Nurturing of the young, or, or protective instincts. Since self-preservation is entirely asocial, the book drops this as a point of interest. In the social domain, the two most powerful forces, therefore, are sex and the protective instincts we have for dependence. Therefore, sex and the protective instincts are the root of all power. This in turn creates three potential power blocks. Children. They have power over their protectors, the men and women who care for them. Men, as sex objects, they have power over those women who desire them, but not over children. Women, as sex objects as well, they have power over the men who desire them, but not over children. Each of these power blocks normally keep each other in check, but where it gets interesting is that women can extend their power by making themselves the protégés of men. In Esther's own words, Women can, theoretically, expand their power by controlling their own sex drive so as to reduce a man to a one-sided sexual dependence upon them. Being usually inferior to their partners, physically and intellectually, they can also appeal to the male protective instinct. They alone, therefore, are in a position to serve both as ward and sex partner as inferior and polar complement at the same time. 
Theirs is the only power block of the three that has what it takes to hold absolute power over another, the male. So how does a woman mobilize the protective instincts of a man? According to Viller, women do this by making themselves appear less intelligent and by depicting her sense of responsibility as childlike. This allows her to not only sell herself as a sex object, but also a child, therefore reaping the benefits and power of both children and lover. Again, in Esther's words, A woman who intends to find a lifelong provider will therefore see to it as a top priority that she does not become too intelligent. If she should slip up here, she will hide her light under the proverbial bushel, at least long enough for the man to officially set his legal seal and signature on his intention to become her provider. A man will therefore put up with playing the father of an adult who occasionally lets himself have her body for sexual purposes since the average man cannot find the woman who will be a true marriage partner at all, he accepts one of many being offered for adoption by her parents. And in a grandiose ceremony vows to take her natural father's place in providing for her henceforth. The role of sex partner, originally used as bait, tends to be neglected at this point. Soon the day will come when the only presence of their children will remind the couple that once upon a time, they used to sleep together. This last statement is so powerful that I will reiterate, most especially for my males in the audience. Experience has shown me that men tend to underestimate the intelligence of women, so I will repeat. According to Viller, some women intentionally hide their intelligence. They conceal how smart they really are, long enough for their partner to legally bind themselves with her through marriage. Then the mask comes off. Forewarned is forearmed. More importantly, perhaps, Esther warns that the protector-protege relationship is a lopsided one. The person that truly loves is not the protege, as one might think, but the protector. This is because the protector has their nurturing instinct activated, a loving biochemical pathway. The protege, on the other hand, has a self-preservation instinct activated, a selfish survival one. This form of relationship not only hurts the man, but damages the woman too. This is because a woman cannot truly feel sexual arousal for a man playing the role of her father, or in the case of a man, a woman playing the role of his mother. Hence, the spark is gone, and both parties wonder what caused it to disappear. In Esther's words, A woman with a normal sex drive seldom sees a desirable lover in the man she has chosen for his usefulness as a provider. Many women even feel a positive revulsion against having sex with their father's substitute. They play the role of sex partner as long as it serves as bait to trap the man into adopting them and searing children with them. Once this has been achieved, they increasingly stress their roles as prodigies, the easiest role to play and the line of least resistance. After this point, such a woman will revert to the role of sex partner only in an emergency, when a rival appears who threatens to take away her provider, for example. A mother no longer needs to even play the role of prodigy. Her children will do it for her, more convincingly than she ever could. Their father will go on protecting her in any case, because she is needed by their children. Of course I love my wife and children, says the pater familias as though it were the same kind of love. Yet, for him, it is the same love. Fascinating, the damages we can unconsciously do to one another. Now, this Secret People episode is just scratching the surface of Esther Villers' masterful work, The Polygamous Sex. Those of you who would like to learn more should definitely purchase the book. Link is in the description. Speaking of relationships, one way to spontaneously meet new people is through the secret spots you save on Cityscape. Just click on a number of explorers to see who else wants to visit the same spot you want to go to and send them a message. Those of you who want to explore and meet new people should download the Cityscape app. When will women become civilized enough to stop mistreating men? When will they cease from training their lovers to become providers? 
merely because they have the power to do so. Esther Villar became quite popular for her anti-feminist stance. She received considerable press and even appeared on The Tonight Show to discuss her work. Much of this attention has not been positive, however. There were serious outcries and even outrage from feminists towards Villar. Villar even reported receiving death threats. Regardless of where you stand politically, I seriously believe there is enormous benefit from reading Villar's work. She will give you an entirely different perspective, which is important, because there are always two sides of the fence. As parting note, I'd like to say that Villar's writing is very psychologically advanced, but if you open your mind to it, it will lift you to levels of thoughts you did not even know exist. See you next time.